So today we're going to go over 10 things you might want to know about CME version 8.0. So from the Copley web page, we can find the software and we can see CME version 8.0. Uh, it can be downloaded and it'll ask you for your uh, email, but if you just enter your email, it will download it for you immediately. Um, one thing to know about CME version 8.0 is it's designed for 64-bit computers and 4K monitors and Windows 10. It's using the latest Java from Sun Microsystems, which is now owned by Oracle, which maybe in the future uh, they don't they don't want they don't like to support so much Java, so it's a little bit more open source. Um, the other thing you can do if you have an old computer that's 32-bit and uh, you have some old drives and you want to use the old 32-bit version of the software, uh, we can see there's a, a download. Um, this should say 7.1, but uh, this will download version 7.1. I'll get that fixed. Um, also, for the Copley people, uh, there's a partner resource page, and uh, we can see CME is also located on the download page. Uh, this will be CME version 8.1, which is still 8.0 now, but it'll be the beta 8.1 with any new features that are required uh, with the new uh, CME 8.0 that aren't there, and we'll add it to 8.1. Um, in the future, we'll have CME 9.0. Okay, uh, I downloaded CME 8.0 and installed it on my Windows computer here. Um, I must have it 64-bit because it runs fine. So, uh, some of the things that we're interested in, like number two, uh, where, where, where the encoder information is put in now. So we'll take a look at the new things on the setup screen. Looks familiar. Uh, much the same, put in what your feedback is, you know, information about your system. Is it vertical or does it have a break? That's an interesting question up front because it affects what happens later when we do the auto configures. The new and interesting thing is the motor information is right next to the feedback options, which is probably a more logical place to put this data. Um, we can still access it from the motor screen. I'll show you that in a minute, but uh, just basically very similar things going on here. Uh, with an absolute encoder, I like to do a emulated output and uh, you can divide the count. That's new, that's cool. So you got a 17 bit encoder and you can't handle 20 megahertz on your old controller, you can divide it down or even higher frequencies get want to get divided down. Uh, 20 megahertz is probably a limit of where you want to be for your frequency out of a drive anyways. So number three, um, there's something new on the uh, network configuration. Uh, I get a lot of support calls for, you know, why do I have command input fault? Why did I configure the, the node guarding? I never entered anything for that. But um, if you use some can open master software and then you save to flash the node guarding of course these values will be there and the drive will node guard because it's saved to flash ethercat's a little different so this is just the case of can open if you have numbers here and you don't like node guarding because your ethercat master is not connected you can clear it set them to zero close and save to flash um, this is also how to get the node address uh, there's a layer setting service too if you don't want to you know, have to set a node address switch, but that seems to be a little more complicated for people. But it was very good in a six axis robot application that didn't have access to node ad address switching. So we'll take a look at uh, where the, um, the, the, the feedback tab went on the motor screen. Um, you can see the motor data like you know and love and the feedback tab is now a button for adjusting the feedback. If you want to take a look at it, or if you made a mistake, 
uh, and, and it kind of motor data kind of consists of feedback data too. So it's kind of logical that they'd be together. Um, but the interesting thing here is you can also enter the tag data on your motor, which is like the ratings. And you can put the current in RMS, see what the peak is. Um, part of this advanced feature set is that you can do characterization of the motor given minimum data. I still like to get all the motor data, but sometimes we're stuck with the motor, we can't get it all. So we can do this characterize and tune, and it does stuff like tune the current loop, auto phase, tune the velocity loop, tune the position loop, tune and characterize, uh, it's like a report when you're done. Um, I think we still need to work on the position loop tuning, it just takes the default value. So if you have a large inertia mismatch, uh, just be careful, you want to make sure you still tune the position loop manually, but I'm sure 8.1 will have some new features for that. But uh, the basic idea is you start doing this, uh, this, this auto characterization, auto configuration, um, and it just runs through all the, the loop tunings and stuff. Um, I'm going to stop it because we're just trying to show CME here. Uh, there's still a calculate button. Uh, motor data files you can still gather. Um, some of the uh, the new the new products that we have here, uh, CME version 8.0 allows you to connect to some of the new drives. Um, we have the AEV and the APV and the IES and XCC resolver. Um, so new products are covered, things that aren't released yet, but uh, maybe they are uh, starting to ship uh, for, for beta sites. Actually, this one's released now. And APV, AEV are next to be released, and IES is on its way. Um, in the future, you know, when we come out with new products, we'll have CME version 8.1 beta that will connect to them. Uh, another interesting feature is the frequency analysis tool. So uh, I'm going to call this number five for interesting things. Um, uh, frequency analysis tool allows you to go through uh, frequency analysis for various loops. <clears throat> so the drive does the uh, the Bode plot. Um, it does the excitation frequency. It looks at the gain magnitude and phase angle. Um, so you can see uh, when when the sweep is done, you can look at the the frequency response of the current loop here. Uh, you can adjust the steps and the the end frequency for the bandwidth test. Um, usually 1.2 kilohertz is what I tune for in most applications, although you can have more. So you know, the gain, mar the margin, uh, sorry, the magnitude is in blue. It goes out flat and starts to roll off. Uh, there's some interesting thing going on here. I'm not sure what that is, but uh, I get approximately three kilohertz of current loop bandwidth. I think this is the magnetic effect of this of the Tamagawa motor. Um, it's okay. I'm not losing too much phase and gain margin here, so, so we're good. But the basic idea is you can do closed loop, open loop velocity, open loop velocity plant, position plant, open loop velocity controller, and open loop position. Uh, these are for those of you who like to use MATLAB, you can save save the plot and uh, take the comma separated value tables and suck them into your MATLAB if you like. That's kind of cool. Um, another interesting feature of the uh, the dual axes drive are these gantry features. Uh, we may be familiar with cross coupling, and uh, I'm going to just open up an XP2 here and look at this new feature that's in the software. Um, so I've configured the, the A axes to be position, and then the B axes, I'm gonna make that a current mode. Um, B follows A. So in a current mode, slave, the, uh, the B axes follows the A axes current. That's kind of cool because this way I get the same force on both motors that are pushing together. Um, in some cases, you get really stiff 
mechanical couplings, and, and this works really good, and the uh, cross-coupling doesn't work so good. Uh, but in most uh, gantry systems, there's a little bit of play between the two axes, so cross-coupling is good for that. Um, of course, uh, along with CME is some, uh, you know, new documents. All these have been updated. Um, a parameter dictionary has been greatly simplified. Uh, it's taken out some of the uh, device net stuff tables, but, you know, it's just add a hex value to this to get to the device net anyways. But there's the old macro stuff and the Ethercat and CAN objects. Talks about the memory and the type of data that's in it, and a good description. The descriptions have been updated, and new features have been added. Um, we can look at the CME release notes, and one interesting thing is, of course, uh, you know the, the the products and the features that have been added. The ability to enter frequencies less than one hertz in the frequency analysis screen. Um, that's true too for the scope. So, shut that phone off here for the moment. Uh, another feature that we'd like to talk about is on the outputs. Uh, some of the outputs are configurable for regen. So, let's suppose I have a, a high current drive and I'm pushing a lot of watts into the motor uh, and then it comes back at me. Uh, do I need to buy a regen device? No, I'll just uh, turn on an output to maybe a solid state relay and a resistor of my own design. Um, external regen active on. So this turns on an output when the voltage exceeds some value. Uh, so you can program like turn on at 89. That's before the over voltage shutdown. Turn off again at 86. What's my resistance? Maybe I got five ohms, maybe it's 50 watts. Some resistors can handle a huge amount of instantaneous watts for a short period of time. So this allows you to configure for the device um, based on the currents. Okay, so that's number eight. Number nine, position triggered output. So another way to use your outputs, um, position triggered output. So you can say, uh, when I'm at a certain position for 10 milliseconds at position 1,000, turn on the output. This is software position triggered. There's actually a hardware position trigger, and uh, that's output triggered position based on hardware for the FPGA products. But uh, if you have a, a, a ARM or DSP, that could be a soft output. And then, of course, the uh, simulated encoder burst. So simulated encoder burst is an input, and uh, when the input goes from a low to a high transition, if you have an absolute encoder and you're so many counts away from the zero position, this will burst out that number of counts at a certain frequency, like a few megahertz. Uh, if you're really far from that position, it'll take a little while to burst out, but the burst is cool because this allows you to use an old-style controller that needs to take care of counts and you have an absolute encoder on your system, you want to know where you are with respect to zero, it'll burst out the pulses and say, hey, I'm like a million counts away from zero, that's where I am. So that allows the controller to determine where you are. So thanks for watching. These are the new features of CME version 8.0, 10 things you might want to know about it. Thanks for watching.